and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to take a look at this puzzle on screen, which is by um, David McNeil, the regular competitor for the UK in the World Sudoku and World Puzzle Championships. Now, David released an online test earlier this week um, featuring hybrid puzzles. So this, this, this Sudoku here has a hybrid uh, it's a hybrid of clone Sudoku and killer Sudoku, which is it looks very interesting. Uh, and we'll have a look at that in a moment. But I just want to mention first, um, thanks to all those of you who've gone out and bought uh, Chess Sudoku. It came out earlier this week. The reviews have been great so far. We are very, very pleased. Um, and if you have bought the app and are enjoying it and you haven't rated it yet, please, if you could just spare one minute to go onto the App Store or Android or wherever it is and and give it some stars, we would be most appreciative. Um, now, I want to talk about this test because I was looking at the results. So if we come here, we can see this is the results. Now, the test was due to last 90 minutes. And you can see Kota Morinishi, the three-time World Sudoku champion, uh, finished the entire set in 38 minutes. So that is absolutely extraordinary. I mean, he's he's a considerable. He's almost ten minutes quicker than the next fastest. Um, I mean, this is, I mean, this is just a unbelievable performance from Kota on this exam. Um, but what I also wanted to show you is if we come down to the bottom here, we can see each of the puzzles, and you can see how many points were allocated to them and how many people entered answers for them. Now, the reason I've chosen the killer clone or killer and clone is it has the lowest entry. So I suspect um, there must be a trick to it or something that was very hard to spot under exam conditions. Um, but what I'm going to do as well, I suspect all of these puzzles are going to be brilliant. So I'm going to run a Twitter poll and you guys can choose another of these puzzles for us to do on the channel. Um, Mark did do the test and he said, well, I shouldn't really spoil it, actually, but in case you then pick the ones he said were hard but he said he said he found the little killer in the thermo hard and one other as well i can't remember which one that was um but let's think about it this this puzzle we're going to do today is a 65 point puzzle out of what was it 450 yeah so that's what something like 12 or 13 minutes something like that um a uh, is how long this puzzle should take if you were just aiming to finish the test within the time. And you can see to do that, you'd have had to be going at some pace. Very few of these, only the top 17 people finished the test and there are a lot of entries. Um, so if you can get this done in under 15 minutes, I think you are well on track for being very, very competitive on the world stage. Now to beat Kota, what did Kota, Kota's time? 30, 38 minutes, good grief. So, I mean, this is something like a five or six minute puzzle for Kota, um, which, yeah, maybe we won't use that as our benchmark. Right, where's the puzzle? Here it is. So, how does this work? Well, you can see we've got some killer Sudoku type cages in the grid, and the only thing to remember about those is that you can't repeat a digit in a killer cage. So, whatever, let's say we've figured out this square was a four, then none of these other three cells in the 12 cage could be a four. Um, obviously, the number in the top left is the sum that you need to make sure all of the digits in the cage add up to. And then we've got these cloned regions. There are three gray cloned regions. Now, these have to be exact mirrors of each other. So if you if we found that there was a one in this position in this clone, there would have to be a one in this position and this position in the other clones. Um, so that's all there is to it. Now with that I'm going to have a go, let's get cracking and if you want to have a go, and I do recommend it, click on the link under the video and that will take you to our web page where you should be able to play along. Now as I was typing this into the software I noticed something which is probably what I would do to start which is that every single cell in this Sudoku is either in a clone square or it's in a cage. Now that means we ought to be able to work out the value of each of these clones. And we can do that because we know that the every three by three block in a Sudoku will contain the digits from one to nine. 
Now, if you add the digits from 1 to 9 up, you'll get 45. So I know that this Sudoku in total, if we looked at the finished solution, we're going to have 9 lots of 45 in the grid, which is 405. So all I've got to do, in theory at least, is add up the value of all these cages, deduct that from 405, divide that by 3, and we're going to get the value of each of these clones. So why don't we start with that and see what that tells us. So we've got... Uh, 54, 61, 81, 88, 95, 105, 128, 156, 180, 209, uh, 209, oh yeah, let's use that one, <laughs> 239, 251, 252, 272, 285. So we've got 285. So we've got 120. When we deduct four, well, 405 minus... 280 is 120 so we know we've got three cloned areas so we divide 120 by 3 and we get 40 so each of these areas adds up to 40 now we ha have to be a bit careful I was about to make a mistake by saying that ah that means there can't be a 5 in the um, in the grade areas but that's not true because if we look at these clones they are not in the same box so we don't actually know what's missing. Um, so we could we could easily have repeated ones and repeated nines or something like that, and you could you could you could make it up a different way. So I'm not actually sure how helpful that is to know that each of these adds up to forty, but it might be helpful. So let's look at the rest of the grid and see what we can spot. Are there any cages here that have restricted properties? Well, there's this one, the 30 cage. That must be 6, 7, 8, and 9. That's the only way of getting to 30 in four cells. The 12 is... There are two ways of making 12 in four cells. It must contain a 1 and a 2, though. Let's label that up in case that matters. 28, similarly, there's two ways of making 28, and it must contain an 8 and a 9, so let's put that in. Uh, right. Okay, well, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use the geometry of the grid, I think, because if we look at column 1 and column 2, we know that these two columns will sum to 90, two lots of 45. But we can see here we've got 27, 51, we've got 80 in the cages that are entirely contained within the first two columns. So I know actually these two cells sum to 10. So these sum to 10 and these sum to 10. Ah, now that, that's immediately helpful, look down here. If these sum to 10, there's no way this square can be an 8 or a 9. Because we've got 10 here, plus 29, that's 39. These two have to sum up to 6. So in fact, this square has to be a 5 or a 6, I think. Oh, no, not 5, 4 or 5. Can't be a 6 because I can't put a 0 there. So this is a 1 or a 2. And can we do anything else? I'm not immediately seeing how to use that further. So let's do, we can do the same trick on, look, row one and row two and get the value of these two squares. Let's do that, 27, 55, 81. So these two add up to nine. So these add up to nine. Though, ah, these two add up to nine, plus 26 is 30. Five. So these add up to 10. I don't really see how to use that either. So if, if these add up to 9 and these add up to 10, I think that's what we said, that's 19. So we know these four squares must add up to 21 because we know the total for the grey squares is 40. So these squares here add up to 21. Ah, now in fact, these add up to 21, but plus this side, now I think, 
I've lost track of whether I, th I think that was 10, wasn't it? So I've got 21 plus 10. That's 31. So these add up, ah, there you go. There's the break in. These add up to 14. Now, if we look at these two carefully, the lowest number I can make those two squares add up to is 13. So in fact, they must add up to 13 because I still need to put something in that square. So that is a one. And these two digits are six and seven. So these two are eight and nine. And well, if we think about, we know that there must be a six or a seven in this 28 cage. So it now must be there. This is an eight, nine pair. Eight, nine here. So, okay, so we've just got, we made a little bit of a break in there, but I've got I'm stuck again now. Um, let me just have a look at this for a second. So now, ah, hang on, hang on. So we know these add up to 21 plus nine is 30. So these add up to 15. Yes, this is good. These add up to 15. But I can also work out the value of these three squares now, because I know that this is eight, nine, that's 17. Plus 13 is 30. So these squares add up to 15. So I've got 15. I think I said that was 15 as well. So that's 30, 31. But these two cages add up to 33. So that square is a two. Good grief. Um, right, now this is brilliant because now look, we know these two squares sum to nine, but they can't be one eight, they can't be two seven, and they can't be four five because that's going to clash here. So these two squares are three and six. And... Okay. Now these two sum to nine as well, don't they? Because that's what we worked out those were. So if these sum to nine, they can't be three, six, they can't be one, eight, they can't be four, five, or we'll have the same four, five problem. So these are two and seven. That fixes that as a one, fixes that as a five, and puts a four here, and we're off and running. Now the five in this 28 cage means this must be a six. And we've got two seven look at the top of the clone. So we must fill that in in the other two clones, just in case that's going to be helpful. Twenty nine, thirty, thirty five. These have to add up to ten. So these two are either three seven or two eight. Now, this is this is lovely as well, look, because we know that each of these yellow squares is either a 3, 7 or a 2, 8 pair. Well, look over here. We've got a 7 in this box already. So this cannot be 3, 7. Therefore, in every position there, it's 2, 8. That is gorgeous, which fixes the 9. And that gives us an 8 there as well. The 2s also resolve the 2, 7 at the top. Now, once we get that resolved, we must do it in every of the clone squares. We've got one, three, and four to place in those positions, look. So this square must be three, sorry, three, four, or six. Um, okay, so we know these add up to 21, don't we? And if this is one, three, four, this must be one, three, four, ah, there you go, we can use it again, it's brilliant this. So now, this can't, given that we know these two digits are one, three, and four in some order, but from this clone, we've got a one there. So this, in fact, is a three, four pair. Therefore, we get the same up there, that fixes the one and the six. That means these two squares are three and four. These two squares have got to be, what's that, nine and five? So again, we can fill that in in the other two clones. Let's use the middle square now with this 5, 9. We've got 23 in this sort of 
plus shaped region plus 10 so that's 33 these two have to add up to 12 so this is either a 3 or a 7 and it can't be a 3 because there's a 3 4 pair in the row so that is a 7 therefore this is a 5 and now because we've fixed the 9 and the 5 in this clone we get to fix it in the other ones 2 here actually that's going to allow me to do the 2 and the 8 on this side which allows me to do the 2 and the 8 all over the place 3 4 here so these two squares have got to be 1 and 6 you can see that's going to be resolved here because if this is a 1 6 pair the one there forces that to be the 6 that to be the 1 and that to be the 6 this must be a 1 to complete the column we need 3, 4 and 9 in those squares, so the 9 must be on that side and this is a 3, 4 pair. These squares here have got to be 1, 7 and 8. You can see the 7's forced to the top by the 7's on both edges. The 8 fixes that one, that's a 1. Now the 17 cage is forced as well because we've already got, we know these three squares add up to 10. So we now know these must be 4 and 5. And that fixes that that's a 3. Uh, that fixes the clone shape. Look, this is 4, 5. Can we f can't quite resolve that yet, but I think we're doing all right here. We're not doing as well as Kota did, but, but we're doing okay. <laughs> um, now, this has got to be 7 and 8. You can see the 8 there is resolving it. 8, 7 into these two squares. We still need a 5 in this row, so let's label those up and have a look where we can go now. So there's got to be a 1 down here. Oh, there's a 3 there, in fact. So that's a 6, that's a 3. These two squares have got to sum up to 9, if my memory serves me correctly. And in fact, they're the only two le left. In. So this is a 1 8 pair, the 8 there fixes it. 8 1. Must be a 1 in the 13 cage. These have got to add up to 12. You can see they've got to be 5 and 7. It's the only valid option left. That fixes the 4 and the 5 up there. Yeah, and I think I think we spotted the trick. I think we did. I think it was that the playing around with the geometry of the puzzle and then cloning it. It's hellishly clever. One, three, five, and eight. So there's so a one here, an eight up here, threes over here, and fives over there. These two squares have got to be three and four. So we've got the clones filled. I think it's just going to be a matter of doing decent Sudoku from here on. So 7, 6 can be resolved in that way. There's a 6 in one of these two squares. 1, 2 and 4. You can see the 2, 4 here. Shift the 2, 4 upwards. So that's a 6, that's a 1, that's a 4, that's a 2. The 8, 9 is resolvable because of the 9 here. This 8 fixes the 8. Oh, oopsie, I didn't mean to do that. It fixes the 8 at the top. So when we place the 8 in this square, there's now only one square left for a 5, 1 and 3, 3 and 4, 2 and 5, 4 and 9 into those two squares. You can see the 4 at the bottom tells us which way round that goes. This 5 fixes the 5 and the 3. We still need a 9 and a 6 here. That's now doable. And we still need a 3 and a 7 here, so that's doable as well. And I think we're done. Let's check. Yes. What a great puzzle. What a great puzzle. Let me know in the feedback what you thought. And remember to check out um, our Twitter poll. So our Twitter handle is at Cryptic Cracking. Uh, you can find a link under the video as usual. And um, let me know which other puzzle of David's you'd like to see. Thanks for watching. Back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.